Monday, January 22nd, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. You guys know I open up with the stock market indexes and usually the E-mini, and I am loading the March futures contract for the E-mini. Here we go. Boy, oh boy. On Friday, we had a major bullish breakout. I thought we were going to have a bit of a downside correction Oops. before that happened. But I've been saying all along that I have been bullish and it surfaced on Friday's close. We have follow through today, very typical of a bullish breakout. And we are starting to get very, very close to overbought. So this breakout, which is now a day and a fraction old, is probably close to hitting a minor high. And we're gonna come back down to approximately 48.37. That would be the beginning of support the highs that we saw during uh, late November and early January. And that is probably going to hold the dip maybe down into the red support area uh, a little bit lower. I don't really think so. Now I'm erasing the downside objective on the double top, which is not a double top anymore because it broke out to the upside on Friday. It's just a sideways trading range uh, in a bull trend. I'm bullish, very much so. I'm looking for a turn down that's going to be minor for another buying opportunity. Here we go with the spider. And this is all time. Okay, this is my one-minute chart on the spider. As you can see, the market opened this morning on a bit of an up gap, pulled back down, closing the gap almost, not quite. We do have a little bit of a gap still there. I think it's probably 20-some hundreds. 20 ticks or so, very small. A gap is a gap. So I think we're going to dip back down probably today, maybe tomorrow, and then maybe even more in order to get the spider back to a support area, which would be 470, nah, 479, maybe a little lower, 477 and a half. We are overbought. We got up to 75 plus on my custom relative strength index indicator at the bottom of the screen. So that means we are soon likely to have a bit of a dip back down. Again, support, I think is going to catch it. And we're going to turn right back up again. I'll erase that old gap. Probably not going to get closed. Gaps are almost always closed. That one does not look like it's ever going to get closed. So very bullish on stock market index. No ifs ands about it, about it, but eh, overbought conditions do lead to minor corrections. Sometimes, you know, really, really, really big ones, but not this circumstance at this point. Next chart, spider one minute. Let's go to the DIA daily data. Same kind of commentary. New highs, I believe new historic highs also on Friday, as well as a follow through today. Definitely which is above the high that we had on January 5th, I think it was, yeah, of 22, which was the beginning of the bear market of 2023, and the October 13th lows, which are the beginning of the bull market we are still involved in. From a bigger picture, it looks like there's a lot more upside potential. Downside retracements, I think, should be bought. And back to a little support looks likely. Next chart is the Russell 2000. We gapped up today. So that matches my minor downside retracement likelihood for the other indexes to close today's gap in the Russell 2000. And maybe even a little bit lower, but I am not looking for any major downside swing here. Might even last a day or two or three, and that's about it. Next, QQQs gapped up not only on Friday morning, but also on Thursday morning. So we actually have two gaps on the QQQs to potentially close. The higher one from Thursday's high to Friday's low is right smack at the breakout point on the upside. So that one looks like a very good candidate to come back and close at 413 and a quarter. Maybe a little lower to 407-ish. But that's about it. And then turn around and make new highs for the whole trend. Next, we got the um, NASDAQ futures contract overbought. 
Some of these indexes are overbought. Some of them are very close, except for the Russell. And I'm expecting a minor retracement back to support. And that is about it for stock market indexes. This happens to be the um, uh, E-mini March futures contract. So we might slip back a little bit from this point. Futures, futures, futures. In the E-mini, we have a little bit different perspective, same chart. So this is the continuation chart for futures contracts, various ones, 23 of them. Come back to support 48, 42-ish, maybe a little lower, and then higher after that. And you can contact me, remember, at info at ersignals.com. You got a symbol you want me to or instrument you want me to analyze on the show. You want to ask questions. That's how to reach me. Next, NASDAQ. Same thing, overbought, come back to the retracement support, turn around, make new highs. All happening probably within two weeks or less. Next, bonds. Did get oversold. Did get down very, very close to a support area where I would have expected to turn back up again, especially if it's oversold at the same time, which it seems to be starting to do. So now we have the first day up at the moment for a few days of down move. And I think that correction to the downside is over. Now I'm looking for a move back up to resistance. That's 123-ish. And frankly, above 125, also 126, and then higher even after that. Remember, on a long-term basis, the Fed did say, and it'll probably come true, that they might even lower interest rates for a change later on this year, even a couple of times. They even alluded to maybe three. But it ain't happening this week, this month, or probably not this quarter. So late summer, early fall. But markets move on, to, on anticipation and reverse on realization. So we are anticipating more decline, and that means up for both the bond and this chart, at least to 133. Maybe it'll take a couple of months and higher. Next, that chart goes up, rates go down. Ten-year notes, this chart goes up, rates go down. Same commentary, test of support. Not quite oversold, but super, super close on Friday. And up we are going today. Looking for higher highs above 113 and probably into the major resistance area again in the next several weeks, couple of months. Next is the crude oil. Oh, some strength, no surprise. We're coming out of a support area. I think we're going to come back up to 80, 81, maybe 82, where the next resistance level is of significance. That's what I'm expecting in the next oh, one to two weeks. Natural gas. We did get a sell signal last Thursday. It worked great on Friday. And wow, a lot more today. We gap down and already we're very, very close to oversold. So we almost got to my test of previous lows that I was looking for. But now that it's gotten oversold so quickly and a gap down implies that we're probably going to pop back up again some short term, next several days. Next, heating oil eh, in a resistance area going sideways. Got to wait more commentary later on heating oil, gold, pretty much the same thing, except for gold has been trying to form a head and shoulder top. I say trying because the formation is there. Everything looked good. And last week on Wednesday, we broke down below the neckline. Should have started a bear move down all the way to 1844-ish. But we started to violate one major rule on Thursday by closing at or above the neckline and a little bit more strength on Friday. Now it's slipping again. If we start closing below last week's lows, we're back in the head and shoulder top expectation mode and a pretty good substantial bear move. On the other hand, getting above Friday's close pretty much kills the pattern completely. And we're back between a little bit of resistance and support. Next, silver. 
big down day today, oversold condition, votes for a beginning of a little rally because they oversold. So back down close, not that close, but getting there to major previous bottoms at 21 and a small number, but we're 22. So uh, another sharp move a day or two's worth would not be a surprise down to 2117-ish and then up. Just because it's the first day of being oversold does not mean you're going to rally immediately. It means you should probably be looking for buy signals. And if you're short, tighten your stops down some. And uh, that's about it. Now, platinum sideways, it was oversold, rallied for a day and a half. Today, it dips a little bit, but still in an area of support. So I'm not going to be surprised if we start making minor new highs again for a few days. I think we got a little bit more of a rally coming here. Um, best I can say. Next, high grade, copper. Between a rock and a hard spot, support levels just a little bit lower, and we're close to uh, oversold conditions, but not quite, not very sure about copper. So leaving it alone for the moment. Soybeans oversold twice, two and a half times maybe, hit support, trying to turn around. We might get a bullish engulfing here, in which case it's going to turn green and I'll get an official buy signal, which we do not have in the last couple of weeks. So I'm looking for buy signals and the beginning of a rally back up to about 1290. Yeah, give or take a little, that's about right. Next. Bean oil support managing to hold okay today is a bullish engulfing, but because we weren't oversold and it is not quite well. Just a second here. Yes, Friday's low was 46.76 for the continuation contract, and today's low is 77. We do not have a bullish engulfing. Otherwise, if today's low is two ticks lower than what have we got at the moment. I would have a bullish engulfing, and we don't. So, yes, a rally up to resistance a little bit, call it 50, and down again. Trend is down, no major bottom here, soybean oil. Next is meal. We're bouncing off so far, very early in the stage, the major bull trend line, which goes back quite a bit to uh, April, May, May of uh, 2022, quite a ways. So oversold conditions, probably going to rally a bit. Nothing fantastic. Maybe. I'm not quite sure about that yet. 398 and we're 354.40. Hasn't started. Don't jump the gun. Be a little patient. Let's see if it starts to move up a sum. Next, corn, oversold, starting to bounce a little bit, certainly not very aggressively. Lots of different resistance levels at higher levels. I've been saying in corn for months and months now that it goes by the way of wheat, which has done the same thing. And I think both, and here's wheat, are going to continue to punch into new low grounds now and then. I have to be neutral to bearish slowly in both corn and wheat until I see something much better as far as potential big bottoms are concerned, and I don't have that. Next, live cattle. Got overbought on Friday. Sideways doji today so far, down a little bit on the net change. Didn't really get up to resistance yet. That's still possible, 180. Um... It is bearish on an intermediate to short-term basis, and there's resistance of significance above the market. I don't trust the rally here. I think it's trying to turn back down. Hogs, pretty much the same thing, although it's already gotten to resistance. And it's already started to make minor new lows for a couple of weeks. And today is a down day and maybe a new low close for a couple of weeks. So I think it's going to head into new lows and test support at 73 pretty soon. Another week or two. Next. 
OJ, as you know, we picked the high of the first shoulder. Unbelievable, perfect, big break right away. Came down to support, got oversold, rallied, great. Another bearish engulfing ER sell signal on the top of the market. The historic high so far on orange juice and formed the last shoulder high, <coughs> excuse me, on December 12th. Minimum downside objective forecasted way back in Jan uh, December was about 288. The low of the day last week, the low of the move was 289.75. Come on. It got to my minimum downside objective less a tiny bit. And in the process has a bullish engulfing. Didn't work quite right. But remember these green and red vertical bars are not always the top of a rally or the high for a long period of time, but they are frequently also part of the bottom building, top building process and not necessarily the highest high or lowest low, which is of course the best signal, but they are frequently the highest high or lowest low. Next, and oh, uh, OJ probably gonna rally a little bit more I think my minimum upside objective has been 324 and today's high is not far from that. So bearish basically. Next, Coco skyrocketing bull market like crazy, overbought condition, testing a longer term bearish, um, a bullish resistance line, bullish because it trends up resistance because it's trading underneath it it's kind of like the top of an upward slanting channel and you bang against the top although the trend is still up and there's no reversal the overbought condition implies you might come down to the support levels which is exactly what i think is about to happen next coffee big rally very interesting uh here we go if this rally stalls out in the next day or two, right away, we'll have a shoulder high. First shoulder, overbought, date December 1st. Top, head of the head and shoulder, December 19th. Draw a line off of these two lows being 174.64 and a tiny bit higher, 175.13-ish. And you've almost got a flat, very, very slightly upward slanted neckline. I'll draw it in the next day or two. And only if it starts to go back down again, will this shoulder have formed. Right now, it's in the right time, right place, price-wise. So it needs to reverse down or the pattern is not there. Next, sugar. Resistance area, got to my objective, stopped on Friday, stopping again today at the same levels. Current quote, a little bit lower on the day. Overbought, I think it's about to turn right back down again, maybe even making it down below 20 this time. And caught in the rag, overbought, long-term sideways, a lot of nothing between a rock and a hard spot. We still might get up to 89.50. And because we're overbought right now, maybe there's a little bit of a dip first to test 79.30 and then up again. Not a lot going on here. Again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And back to the E-mini, which is losing not really much at all. When we started this, we were up a little over a point in the Qs, which is now only up 82 cents, still strong. We were up about the same amount in the DIA, and we're still there at 130 higher, which is not a lot. And almost exactly the same net change on the Spider at the moment. So it wouldn't be difficult for the indexes to drop to lower on the day and maybe starting some kind of a big reversal. I do, as I expected and commented about in the beginning of this YouTube, having a minor downside correction, but I'm still basically bullish longer term. You guys have a great day. Manana.